are live from the Law Firm Studios in sunny San Diego, California. 125 million homes in the U.S. and abroad. Thanks to Biz TV, thanks to Bloomberg Financiero, thanks to American Life Network, and of course on radio. Yes, we are uh, simulcast at the same time on iHeartRadio as well as Biz Talk Radio Network. And what's the other one? The guy with the guns and the. And the Armed Forces. Armed Forces, Armed Forces Radio. Forces the guys with radio guns in the boots. God bless our military men and women serving our country overseas and underway. We are brought to you by Prudential. Let Prudential be your rock for retirement. Also brought to you by Splash Beverage Group. Did you hear that Trish Hunt from The Hunt gets to be their endorsement? Is that their, right? The voice of, of Copa you know? Northwest Biotherapeutics is a devoted sponsor, as well as, is it Bloom and Brands next? Oh, Bayer Advance, better science, better results. Don't put, don't eat, it's, uh, it's fertilizer. Right. No, it really is. It's not the aspirin, it's their, their fertilizer. Oh, okay. So don't put on your Wheaties. Starbucks, may have heard of them. Little coffee company on the corner, on the Kona. Who else do we have? Oh, Bloom and Brands. You know, I love Bloom and Brands. They've got some great restaurants, including the authentic uh, Australian food. Big Biz Show's on the air. Thank you, guys. Um, let's talk to Stephen Brady. Stephen Brady uh, is perhaps the Jack Sparrow of the biotechnology uh, world. Uh, this is one of my favorite guys in a very short amount of time. Um, Tempest Therapeutics, TPST is our stock symbol. Remember the last time we interviewed these guys? That we were like, what don't they do? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, they, in fact, uh, their latest cancer therapy cures male pattern baldness and is an overweight uh, drug as well. Wow. So, no, it's not. I'm just saying these guys have so it we're all covered. covered. Brady, Steve, how are you, sir? Good to talk to you. I was actually bald when I joined the company. Did you really? <laughs> <laughs> and in the last five minutes, your topical uh, treatment worked. Can I ask you, how did you get into biotech? Were you, were, were you a, a welder before, or were you always in biotech? <laughs> Now, if you ask my mother, she would say, why didn't I go to medical school? Uh, oh. I, I mean, I've always been interested in science, and I ended up actually going to business and to law school. I got a joint business and law degree, and it was I am in the Bay Area, north of you guys, and my choice getting out of school was I was either going to do tech or I was going to do biotech or finance, and for me, it was easy. I wanted to go in to do something where we were going to make a difference, and so most of my career has been in cancer, which so, is what Tempest does as well. What's interesting about Tempest is it's, it's cancer treatments, plural not a cancer treatment. Talk about that because you have, I'm not suggesting that, that you've cast a large net um, because uh, you wanted to be efficient, but it just happens you guys have good technology, good research that happen to treat a lot of different maladies. Talk about that. Yeah, so no, I appreciate that. So we are, um, we have four different programs ranging all the way from early stage, very novel science on a target that we haven't disclosed and we think that no one else is working on, all the way up to a program that we call TPST 1120. We're really excited about that program. Yep, it's at the top of that chart. And this is much further advanced. We're actually in a randomized global phase two study in first-line liver cancer. And first-line liver cancer are patients who have never received a systemic therapy. So if you get diagnosed with metastatic liver cancer, this is where you go into the doctor and they say, okay, we're gonna put you on your first um, therapy for this. And unfortunately, um, the prognosis, even with all of the advances we and, and the larger companies around the world have made, it, it's not good. It's still, there's significant need. So, so my, my question for you is, do you guys go out originally and target a specific solid tumor cancer or do you go out there and target a blood cancer? Do you guys say, we're gonna go down this lane and then suddenly you get lucky and it treats a bunch of stuff? or? Do you go for the, you know, throw a big, throw the big net out first? Yeah, so, well, there's generally biotech and then there's Tempest specifically. So in my past, I've worked in, I've been lucky to work with phenomenal science-based platforms, right? Nobel Prize laureate, uh, you know, as the founder of the company where you have a technology and it says you're going to go in this direction because that's where it works. Tempest is different. What we did was we came up and we said, look, what are interesting targets that we think can make a difference? And that's in heme or hematologic malignancies or blood cancers or in solid tumors like liver cancer. The four, when you look at that pipeline chart, all four of those are independent programs. They're not linked to each other. So from an investor side, it's diversified. From a science and eventual patient side, we pick targets that we think are gonna make the biggest difference. And 1120 is you know, pulling ahead in some of the data that we've talked about publicly. It looks like it really could make a big difference.
Even even though you're in the lanes that you are right now, do you have the bandwidth where if something comes up and, and you talk amongst yourselves, you can start that process of, hey, we can we can help some people here if we go down this road? So in, if you mean like in terms of new programs, yeah. four is a lot. Four is a lot for us to work on in a capital constrained organization. To the finance people out there, our PL doesn't have a ton of room. And we face that. We've had investors or people we know in the community say, hey, I know you guys. I like the way you think about developing drugs. Could we put this inside Tempest? And we're always open to that, mm -hmm. right? Because at the end of the day, you need to pick the, the science should lead it. You should pick the strongest program. You know, right? what's, what's interesting is if you look at a tech company, uh, acquisition model is is brilliant because you're taking on assets, you're taking on a low amount of debt. Does that ever happen in the biotech world where you're out there not only researching but potentially acquiring the next therapy? Does that ever happen in your world? Absolutely. I mean, there wow. are companies that have been founded. There was a company called Tesaro that was founded a few years ago where they didn't have a foundational technology and they were financed and they went out and they picked up um, molecules. This market that we've been in, which is, as you guys know, is one of the worst biotech markets in a very long time, I don't want to quote stats, um, there's an opportunity for people to do that too. There's really good science not getting funded right now just because of the vagaries of the market and some other political. Well, it, well, it also comes down to velocity to market, right? Uh, for, for example, you have to go through this sort of arduous uh, trial phase and, the, and you're, at the, you're at the behest of the FDA who, who are gonna tell you, you know, whether you, you get to you know, go to the next space. Yep. In your opinion, on your top leading therapy, if you could guess, wh where are you in that you know, stage? What's the velocity so, to market or even compassionate treatment? Yeah, so it, 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 it is the most advanced program we have and the commercial launch of that drug in terms of it being in the near term and in a few number of years, if the data are positive, we're, that's line of sight for us now, right? So you mentioned the FDA. One of the nice things about being in oncology is in, in all the years I've been working on multiple oncology programs, including a drug that's approved now in multiple myeloma, the FDA have largely been great because cancer obviously is not a cold, right? Yeah. It is not something yeah. that you're just gonna get by. They know that they need to help you move the ball, right? So I found the oncology division of the FDA to be largely very reasonable, but it's onerous, you're right, because we have to generate so much data to get to the point where our drugs are viewed as safe and effective enough to go into the hospital system and get prescribed. So for us, where we are with 1120, in April, we have- Yeah, I was gonna say, let's, let, let's, talk about, let's talk about the data to release in April and where we're at now for the rest of the year, because that's important, right? Yeah, and it's, and it's really exciting. Um, it's potentially transformative for the company. So we have an ongoing global randomized study, as I mentioned, in first line liver cancer, and we partnered with Roche. Um, we still 100% own the molecule, but effectively we took our 1120 molecule and put combined it with their standard of care, right? They are the number one undisputed dominant standard of care in first line liver cancer, and it was compared against standard of care. So this is the study you always wanna do when you're trying to figure out if your drug works, and it's also the opportunity to make the biggest difference because again, the standard of care is the default that all the liver docs use. If your molecule makes that better and, 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 and can improve, then it's gonna get broadly you know, taken up by the, by the liver doctor community. So that study has been ongoing for a couple of years. We had an early look in April, which means we don't have all the data. Sure. And it was pulling ahead in every category. And we've told everybody we're expecting the full data cut this part of the year. Love so it. it be huge. Steve, we got to get you in San Diego. By the way, we are a biotech uh, city, so I, I bet you're we going to be here. By the way, we were founded. We were founded in San Diego. See, by the way, the three of us also I just want to let you know we all have an individual liver doctor uh, as well. That's for, for different reasons. For other reasons. <laughs> Sorry. Just sneezing there. Steve Brady, TPSD. <laughs> Big Biz Show continues. Stand by.